This lesson deals with supplemental problem 1.2. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the chapter 1 supplemental problems starting on page 2. Given a plot of current flowing past a reference point versus time, let's plot the charge transferred past this reference point versus time if we have a zero initial condition. Recall from supplemental problem 1.1, we found that Q of t was equal to the integral from t0 to t of i of x dx plus the initial condition Q of t0. Let's evaluate this equation from 0 to 1 microsecond, where the value of i of t is just equal to minus 10 milliamps. So we have the integral then from 0 to t of minus 10 milli dx plus 0. The minus 10 is the constant, I'm going to pull it out in front. We're left with the integral of 1 dx, and that's just equal to x evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. So it'd be equal to t minus 0 times the 10 milli. This is our value then of q of t versus t. Now since i is equal to the change in charge per change in time, then charge cannot change instantaneously. If we do, we have an infinite slope and we have to produce an infinite current. So the charge is continuous, even though the current is changing essentially abruptly. So if we evaluate this at the end point, that'll become our initial condition for the next integral. Okay, so plugging in one microsecond for t, we then have minus 10 milli times one micro, which is equal to 10 to the minus three times 10 to the minus six, which is 10 to the minus nine, so it gives us minus 10 nanocoulombs. Okay, next interval then will be between 1 and 2 microseconds, where again the current is constant. It's equal to 20 milliamps. And so we'll integrate in that interval. So we got the integral then from t0, which is now 1 microsecond, to t times 20 milli, the value of current, dx, plus the initial condition, which was the value at 1 microsecond. The 20 can come on in front. Again, I have the integral of 1 dx, which is equal to x upper limit minus the lower limit, and then minus this initial condition. So we have 20 milli times t, and minus 20 milli times 1 micro, which is 20 nano, and we have the initial condition. So we then get 20 milli times t minus 30 nano coulombs. And again, at the end point here, that'll become our initial condition for the next interval. So plugging in t equals to 2 microseconds, I then get 40 nano coulombs here, minus 30, which is plus 10. In our next interval, the current is again minus 10 milliamps, and our interval again is from 2 microseconds to t. Value is minus 10 milliamps dx plus the initial condition, our last calculation, of 10 nanocoulombs. Bring out the minus 10 milli. Integral of 1 dx is just x, upper limit minus the lower limit, plus the 10 nanocoulombs. Minus 10 milli times t, and this times this gives me a plus 20 nano, plus the 10 nano, gives me 30 nanocoulombs. And if we evaluate this at the end point of 3 microseconds, and then getting minus 30 nanocoulombs plus 30 nanocoulombs is a zero. In the next interval, if you look back at the top of the page, the current is at 10 milliamps, taking the integral from t0, which is 3 microseconds, to t, and again the value is 10 milliamps dx plus now a zero initial condition from our last calculation. And bring the 10 milli out in front, the integral of 1 dx is just x, so it's the upper limit minus the lower limit, 10 milli times t minus 30 nanocoulombs. Okay, if we evaluate this at the end point, 4 microseconds, that'll be our initial condition for our next integral. Plugging in 4 micro here, I get 40 nanocoulombs minus 30, which is plus 10. And lastly, for t greater than 4 microseconds, if you look at the previous page, we just have a current of 0. So then you grow from 4 micro to t of 0 dt plus our initial condition. The integral of this is just 0. We just have the 10 nanocoulombs. We can put all these results together. Let's take our original sketch of current. This is something we can actually measure in lab, and then we can use this integral relationship to find what the charge looks like versus time. Let's graph our results. Recall, our current was going from minus 10 milliamps to plus 20 milliamps, back to minus 10 milliamps, then the 10 milliamps, and then back to zero. Our first result was minus 10 milli times t, and that's a ramp with a negative slope. We know that at t equals zero, we had zero, and then when t is equal to one microsecond, we had minus 10 nanocoulombs. So we just draw a straight line connecting those two up. Our next result was equal to 20 milli times t minus 30 nanocoulombs. But we know that at t equals to, to one microsecond, we have this value of minus 10 nanocoulombs. And then at two microseconds, we found that it was equal to plus 10 nanocoulombs. 
We have a slope of 20 milli, but that's just a straight line between these two points. In our next result, we found that the result was minus 10 milli times t plus 30 nano. And again, at two microseconds, we had this value of 10 nanocoulombs. And then at three microseconds, we had a value of zero. In our next result, we had a, a 10 milli times t minus 30 nanocoulombs. But again, evaluating here, we had a value of zero. And at four microseconds, we had a value of 10 nanocoulombs. And then after that, the results were constant. This is supplemental problem 1.2.